Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to analyze your game. There's going to be two parts. The first part is going to be doing it on chess.com. The second part is going to be doing it on leechess.org. Both processes are similar, but the buttons are kind of located in some different places. And so I wanted to show you both so that whichever site you use, you can follow along. So the first way to do it on chess.com is to go to chess.com forward slash analysis. And actually, I'll bring this down just a little bit. You can see the URL there. Chess.com forward slash analysis will take you to this board right here. And this is kind of if, if you just want to sort of analyze and make some moves and see, you know, what does Stockfish say the best moves are? This is where you would go. You can see I'm moving the pieces. and You can see Stockfish over here is telling me what the best moves are. Now, one thing I want to point out, notice how I'm seeing three, the top three moves. You can change this to be whatever you would like. You just click on this little settings gear here and where it says number of lines, I have mine set to three. You could change that to one if it's a little bit cleaner and easier for you to follow. If there's only one move or if you really want to see lots of options, you could set it to five. OK, I think three is kind of a good middle ground. Usually you're not going to need to see the top five moves. But sometimes I do like to see what's what's the second or third move. So for me personally, I leave it at three. While we're here, you can see the maximum depth. So this is how long do you want the engine to spend analyzing a particular position? The longer you set it, the longer it will sit there and analyze the position. A lot of times 18 is, is going to be good enough for like 99.9% .9 of people. Uh, and it's going to catch the best move in almost all positions. Uh, if you're looking at some crazy puzzle or something super difficult, maybe you want to bump this up and let it go unlimited and let it just sit there for an hour. Totally up to you. You can do that. Um, but usually I'll leave it at 18 when I'm just kind of looking at some quick, quick games. Okay. So like I said, you can make the moves and this is one way to use it. Another way is if you click on this button down here at the bottom, it says set up position. And maybe you just have a particular position that you would like to look at. You don't know what moves led up to that position. You just want to analyze that particular position. What you would do is click on that. And right here where it says set a position, you click on that. And it's going to give you this option where I can just start putting pieces on the board, whatever I want. Okay. Now, uh, to make it easier, there's a couple of things you can do. Number one, reset the board right over here on the right will give you a clean, fresh board where all the pieces are in the starting position. You can also click on the trash can there to clear the board. And then you can, let's say you were looking at an end game. You wanted to study the king and pawn end game. Here you go. You can just set it up and then you're going to click the load button. Now, a couple of things you want to pay attention to whose turn is it to so make sure you get this right. If it's white or black to move. And then if you're you know, like, you want to prevent castling or allow castling, sometimes that comes into play. Usually it doesn't. You click load and here you go. We can, uh, again, practice for this position we can see that with best play it should be a draw the king can always get the opposition and as long as black doesn't mess up it's going to be a draw okay one more thing i want to point out going back to that same uh, button down here setup position notice how it says load from fen or pgn so pgns are kind of the common format that chess games are stored it's just a text file that has a dot pgn on the end and it stores all the moves so it'll say e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop b5 uh a6 whatever and you can paste that in here. Let me see if I actually have one. All right, so I actually have an example here. This is a PGN file that somebody sent me, one of my um, viewers, actually a game that they played. I believe this was a game against the Megan bot, which I haven't looked at yet. But if I wanted to, um, one way I could do it would be to just copy all of this text, control C, and then I can come back here and just paste it into this box, control V, and then click uh, add games. And here we go. It pulls in the game and I can go through and see this game that this person sent me. It even includes the details about the game. Like there's some comments here you can see that were included in that PGN file and they show up right in here. Okay. Uh, another thing that you can do going back to set up position is you can also paste a fen. So if you've seen any of my chess puzzle videos, I include the fen in the description of those videos so that you can easily copy and paste it into here. So let me go grab one of those and show you what that looks like. So you can see I'm inside my YouTube studio here, but in one of my recent videos, my puzzle videos, I put the fen for that puzzle in the description. I can copy that, jump back over here to chess.com and simply um, paste it over here. And when I click add game, it just loads into position. Okay. And again, I'm analyzing it we can see what's happening and uh, we can see that it's, it thinks that black is winning, even though uh, stockfish is wrong. Okay. This is a win for white F7. If you haven't watched my video, go check it out. Rook to G4. It's not a draw. Uh, stockfish is still confused. This is actually winning. Go watch that video. If you want to see that, um, I realize my head is, is kind of covering part of the board, um, but um, I don't really know where else to put it. So I'll just leave it there anyway. So you've got 
lots of different options. You can load the PGN, you can load the FEN, or you can just set up your own positions. Or one more thing I wanna show you, if I go over here to my profile, and scroll down, you can see these are different games that I have played. This one I lost. Let's uh, see what's going on. I can just click on the analyze button and it's going to take me to a very similar screen where I have the game review being pulled up, okay? And you can see the accuracy by my opponent, 81.4. My accuracy, you can see all the, the blunders and the, the different moves. And if I wanted to, I can click through uh, this game and analyze and see what's going on. Also, up here at the top, I can click on analysis. This is very similar to the game review, um, except now it's actually showing me the stockfish moves right there. So over here, notice it's not really showing me what stockfish is evaluating. It's just kind of showing me good move, bad move, and some of these other things that it wants to mention. When I click on analysis, I get a little bit more control. Also, you've got these three buttons up here, evaluation lines, and feedback. So let me, uh, for this part, let me move my face back over here for just a second. Notice the eval bar over here, okay? If you don't wanna see that, you can turn it off. Turn it on, turn it off. The lines, that just means the lines that Stockfish is showing you. If you wanna see those, you would leave it on. If you don't, for some reason, you would turn them off. And then the feedback are these little symbols that you see on the pieces as we move through. So you can see good move, uh, questionable move, questionable, you know, whatever. If I turn that off, now I don't see those. Now you can see I don't see those uh, unless it is something that's written into the notation. So if you look over here on the notation, it says queen takes before exclamation mark. That's a great move. Those will still show up, but all the other ones won't. When I have feedback on, it's going to tell me something every single time, regardless of if there's a move. See, it's going to say queen c3 is best, uh, you know, inaccuracy, and it kind of shows you these, these extra arrows. That's what goes away when you turn off feedback. Okay, so you've got uh, lots of different options uh, for analyzing your game on chess.com. And now we're going to go over to Lee Chess and kind of talk about the same thing, but how would you do it on Lee Chess? All right, guys, so I'm over here on leechess.org forward slash analysis, and this will take you directly to the analysis board, very similar to chess.com. We can move the pieces around and see what's going on with this position. Notice on the left here where my head is, it's talking about which opening is being played, and so you can get information there. On the right, we see the moves, and there's a button up here which we can turn on Stockfish. And again, see how there's five moves being shown. If I wanna change that, I have the option to change that. I come down here to these three bars, click on that, and where it says multiple lines, you can choose how many you wanna see. So let's say I only wanna see three, and then you can see now it's only showing me the top three. Okay, so very similar like we saw on uh, chess.com. Um, there's also this book down here, Opening Explorer and Table Base. This is one of my favorite features on Lee Chess. I use this all the time when I'm trying to prepare for opening traps and, and that kind of thing. So you click on that and it's gonna show you the opening database. Notice how it has a master's database, Lee Chess, and then if you've played any of your own games, you can see your own games there. So that's kind of cool. Um, the difference between the Masters and the Lee Chess. Masters is only going to be players who are rated 2200 and higher. So there's less games, but they are by stronger players. So if you're just strictly looking for like, okay, what's the best move? You would want to use this one probably or Stockfish. Lee Chess um, is, has a lot more games. So if you look at the very bottom, actually, you can see this over here. Masters database from this position has 203,000 games. That's a lot of games, but it doesn't compare to the Lee Chess database of 153 million games, right? So the, why would you want to look at Lee Chess? Um, if you want to see what more people are playing at lower ratings, not necessarily if they're playing the best move, but what are they just playing? This is where I would go, right? And sometimes these moves match up. Sometimes they don't. And this is a good way to find opening traps, okay? Because people might, might mess up and you can figure it out uh, here. So I'll give you a good example of this. There's a trap that I'm aware of, bishop c4, knight to f6, d4. And if we go to the master's database here, top move by far is e takes d4, and then the second move is knight c6. Only a few people have played knight takes e4. It's not really a good move. But if we go to the Lee Chess database, notice how knight takes e4 is a much more common move, and notice how it's 61% win rate here for white. So if I see this, I go, oh, what's going on here? And you can kind of see by looking at the percentages, 64% win rate after d takes e5, right? And the point is the knight is kind of misplaced and trapped. A lot of people will play bishop c5. And I can, you can see I'm following the line here. This is one of the lines that I cover in my courses, by the way. And 
they're both good moves. Bishop takes f7, but queen d5 is actually the best. We've got the triple attack here, and yes, black can take here. Either way, most people take with the bishop, um, but we simply move our king. Doesn't really matter. They're both pretty good, and black's in trouble. You've got this threat. You've got this threat. You've got this threat. Anyway, the point is I was able to find that by looking at the Lee Chess database, right? So keep that in mind. All right. Also, if I click this button here and go to board editor, we will get to very similar thing that we saw on chess.com. Let me move my face out of the way here. Uh, you can set up a position. Okay. So again, if you want to go to the starting position, you can do that. If you want to clear the board and set up some sort of end game or really any position, two rooks and a knight against a queen, I don't know. And then you'll click analysis board. Same thing. You make sure whose move is it and Let's go analysis board. Let's see what does Stockfish say. Looks like white is winning. Rook to a2, and we can play around with this position. Now, one more thing. Let me move my face back out of the way. Over here on the right, notice how when I was in the beginning of the game, it was showing me the openings. Now it's showing me some other random moves. What is this? This is called a table base. So this is an end game feature. And whenever you get to the end of the game, I believe it's seven pieces total or less. It might actually be eight pieces now, I'm not sure, but one, two, three, four, five, six pieces we have. If they're seven or less, uh, the outcome of the game has been stored in a, in a database, essentially, and that's what we're seeing here. We can see it is going to be a loss for black, right? They move here, it's, it's losing. As long as white plays the correct moves, uh, white's going to be able to win. You can see all of these moves here for white are winning, okay? And if you make a mistake and play this move knight to b4, well, now it's a draw. See how it changes? As long as black plays queen takes b4, it's a draw. And so oh, now the game is a draw, and you can see it doesn't really matter. We're, we're drawing unless we play king to d1, in which case we are losing because of the move. Ah, queen to b1 check, and black is winning the rook, and now it's a winning endgame for black. All right, so table base is pretty cool if you're looking at endgames. And then we saw the opening explorer uh, if you're looking at openings. And, of course, stockfish is available for you for anything in the middle. Okay? All right, so that's the analysis tab. And then also, if I come up here to Chess Vibes YT, click on that, go to my profile, I have games over here. You click on that, and you can see all of these are different games that I have played. And let's just check this one. I can click on it, and here's the game. I can flip through it, see you know what happened. And also, this button over here on the right, it says analysis board. Let's say I was interested in this position right here. I could click on it. And here we go. Now Stockfish pops up. Also, the opening um, Explorer pops up. We can see there is a game that was... Oh, this is my game. Yeah. So uh, there's no other games, just my game. But you can see that that's there. All right. So you can analyze your games very easily uh, in Lee Chess as well. Actually, I forgot one thing. On the Lee Chess analysis board, um, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but you've got the Fen where you can paste in the Fen, just like I showed on chess.com. And then you also have the PGN where you can paste in a PGN. Same thing. You put it in there, you click uh, enter or import, and it will load the position or the game. Okay. That's all I have for you guys. Let me know down below if I missed anything or if you still have questions, but hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you next time. As always, stay sharp, play smart, and take care.